I get asked all the time, and we were asked consistently by these news outlets, "Why are you? What are you guys doing? Why are you together? Why are you collaborating?" Yeah, right. So, what is the story? It starts. You, you tell your story first, because my story with you kind of happened at the same yeah. time. But you t- talk about because uh, uh, the Chosen is my favorite TV show. Duh. Yeah, um, it's my fourth favorite. My fourth. Uh, no, truly. Um, so the cool thing before I even got this invitation to collaborate for this Christmas special a few years ago. Um, the Chosen had made such an impact on my life. You know, all my friends and family were like, you have to check out this, you have to check this out. And you know, and I've got other ideas of like what this is gonna be like, right? 90% of Chosen viewers started reluctant. Right, Like they okay. did like, oh, okay, it's not gonna be good. I turned on episode one, season one, and I'll never forget, it was actually like at the end of like a date night, me and my wife are about to turn in and, and uh, we're like, let's check out this 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 episode. It's probably like one of the only shows we can watch together because you know she likes ro- romance, I like <laughs> violence. Um, and so, okay, let's watch this. And I'll never forget the end of the episode when Jesus walks onto the scene. And y'all, it was like as if Jesus just walked into my house. <laughs> the fullness of God's presence, the weight of His glory. We're laying in bed. The episode ends. And it was like, Jesus, and I believe he did. I believe his, oh. his manifest presence. I believe God showed up in my house. It was one of the most holy moments, oh. right? Because that's what happens when the gospel is preached, right? His yeah. presence is there. And so God's in my room, you know? <laughs> and, <laughs> and me and Brittany for literally probably 10 minutes, but it felt like an hour. Yeah. Tears rolling down our face. We couldn't even look at each other. <laughs> it was like we were stunned. And it was just like God just met with us. Yeah. It was like... The Bible went from black and white into full color, you know? I was hooked. Yeah. And so. So around that time, maybe a little later, I don't remember the exact time, uh, my wife Amanda, uh, I remember I was doing something and she was picking me up. And I get into the car, she goes, listen to this. And we had seen you with Graves into Gardens, the collaboration you did with Elevation, and uh, that song, we were like, Dang, who's this dude? But you, you, your your solo career, you were more known for collaborating with yeah. others and being kind of a guest singer for others. And uh, so we loved the voice, but we didn't know much else. And uh, someone had shared the song Gratitude with Amanda, and she's like, listen to this. And it was a similar experience. I mean, I'm crying. Uh, it, it, and it's, yes, obviously everyone talks about your voice. You have a beautiful voice. But it's when you you had this grind to it that was coming from your soul, mm. like, and, and you even sing about it in the song. And so the experience you probably had when you first heard it was similar to me. And I'm like, what is this? Where has this been? And, how, and it had been out for a year at least. Yeah. And, and it was like, who is this again? Brandon? Oh, the guy from Graves in the Gardens or whatever. Yeah, right. So then um, when it came time for us to do the Christmas special, uh, on my side of the, uh, my team, I was like, Brandon Lake, and uh, th- have him come on. And they, and they told me, they came back and they said, he doesn't have a Christmas song. Yeah. I'm like, great. Great. <laughs> because here's what he's going to do. He's doing gratitude. <laughs> and um, and I, just, I just knew that uh, if it, it, the impact that it had on us, it was going to have on, on others. Yeah. And, uh, and so... I didn't know. Your, yeah. Certainly did not know that it would be, make as, as big of a splash as it did, you know? And... Yeah. Um, and you, you told me before that you were concerned it would stand out in a bad way. In a bad it's not way. A Christian, uh, not, a, not, a Christmas, not a Christmas song. Not a Christmas song, yeah. Yeah, my, everybody else is doing all these, you know, like, Oh Holy classics. Night and all this classic stuff. And I'm like, okay, here's my little song, you know. Um, and it's like what it says. It's like, this is all I have. I mean, maybe that was fitting. Yeah. Um, it was like, all right, this is what I have to do. And, and then it was crazy because um, I mean, you might have saw it coming. I didn't. But after the Christmas special came out, Jonathan DMs me and was like, Bro, what is this song? Yeah. And it was like, dude, when this song came on and the and everyone was experiencing it, it was like, dude, you could just hear weeping in different pockets of the theater. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, okay, well, man, this is really special. People are receiving it well. And then, gratitude on Apple and iTunes and Spotify, all that kind of stuff. It goes to number one. Yeah. And I remember I was with Phil Wickham and your your shared manager. You guys have the same manager, Brandon. Yeah. My and, besties. Uh, yeah, and I'm with uh, him and uh, Shane and Shane. We're having lunch, and when the news came that it was number one, and we FaceTimed you. Yeah. And, and, and it's so funny now to look back on it because Gratitude is now literally one of the biggest songs in the world. But, yeah, we, we never see that coming, the multiplication coming. Yeah, right. We know when something's going to be impactful but not how big it is. Yeah. And, uh, and now it's literally one of the biggest songs in the world. And uh, and, and The Chosen, of course, become what it's, what it's become. But it, it, 
it all starts, you and I talk about this whenever we talk, it starts with you and I connecting and going, yeah. hey man, your show yes. helped my music. I'm like, yeah. dude, your music helped my show. When I'm sitting up late yeah. at night at four in the morning yeah. and I'm writing and I need a moment where I need to, I need to know the man I'm writing about. Yeah. I need to talk to the man that I'm writing about. Because I do a lot, you and I both talked about this. We do for a lot God. for God, we do a lot about God. We want to make sure we're doing it with, with him. God. Yeah. And so how I do that is I put on Brandon Lake, I put on Phil Wickham, yeah. I put on Hillsong, whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, and I was I want to say this too while I'm thinking of it. We're not going to be watching TV shows in heaven. <laughs> we're going to be worshiping. Yeah. And so this is the end game right here. Whenever uh, someone watches the show and is impacted, wants to know and love Jesus more, mm. the, ha- the baton is handed off. Yeah. And that's where yeah. you lead me and others in worship. A really great practical example is we came out with a song, Tear Off the Roof. Yes. And um, that's on my new record, Code of Many Colors. And I, you know, we're, we're writing the song and I, I just like have to think, like maybe that song wouldn't have been a song had I not like, been, had been watching The Chosen. It's like I, when I went to um, to Israel for the first time, went twice in one yeah, year, yeah, yeah. and it was like everything just made so much more sense. Right. It's like putting skin on the bone, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what The Chosen has done for me. And we literally did it with Tear Off the Roof. We're like, this music video, it can't just be me dancing around like a fool. <laughs> we need some great, like these are Bible stories. Let's You've already illustrated it and depicted it so beautifully. Let's use clips from the show. And so we did that. And uh, what's really cool too is like, you know, I think The Chosen is for all ages, all, uh, it's for everybody. And even my kids watching that music video, they're watching it and that's they're awesome. going, so that's Jesus? And I'm like, yeah, well, that's who plays Jesus. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, but Not the real there, there's, Jesus, right, but it's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But they're like, so, so, this, so that lady was healed when she, when she touched yeah. his garment, yeah. when she touched his coat? I'm like, yeah, son. And like, we find that here in the Bible. And yeah, so it's just yeah. to, put, to take these visuals and then to take worship music and to fuse that together, it's been quite an honor and it's cool to see it impacting so many lives. Yeah, and so Tear Off the Roof is the name of the song. Uh, make sure that you uh, watch the music video because it's got your favorite show on it. Yes. At least I hope it's your favorite show. Yes. Uh, I, I, wa- I want you to know this because I think it's important that in our private conversations, we're not talking about, hey, check it out. Yeah. This can be number one or this can be successful. It's, hey, what is God doing in your life? And we were having like a kind of mutual discipleship session yeah, back right. there about like how your kids are doing and, I, and here's how your song can impact me. Here's how the show, and here's mm. how it ultimately brings us closer to God and brings us deeper into God's word. Yeah. That's really, I just want you to understand that it's, it's coming from a place of, Neither one of us knew this was going to happen. You didn't see gratitude coming. I didn't see the chosen coming. And I think um, because we weren't seeking this, where we're sitting right now and right. we're promoting this thing all over the world, right. because that's not what, why we did it. No. I think that's when God said, now you're ready. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because you weren't seeking gratitude to become one of the biggest songs oh, in the world. It's like the moment of surrender. It was like God was, God blessed it. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, now you're ready. And... Um, yeah, like, like you've said before, had this happened 10 years ago or five years ago or however many, for me, I know, at least I can say, I don't know that I would carry it as well as I do now, um, yeah, yeah. And, but I'm grateful. Yeah. So uh, the Christmas special, yeah. I remember on set, you filmed it on the set in yeah. Utah. Yeah. And uh, on the set, the, the crew and a couple of our actors were there too, like Austin and Luke. Luke plays Judas, Austin who plays Nathaniel were there listening and they're like, dude. Like I know we were coming up to you going, yeah, dude. This is going to be big. You're like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. I feel out of place, yeah, but yeah, this yeah. is cool being here. And, yeah, yeah. you know, it'll be what it is. And had no idea, though. But also, yeah, the cast were so sweet to me. Yeah. So it was so incredible to be able to talk but, with them. And Yeah, but real quick, talk about the setting, like f- recording that song in a place that feels like first century Israel. When I was in set, it, it was like there was a simplicity, which was beautiful. Me singing a song that literally talks about simplicity of like, okay, I, I can't bring any yeah. awesome gift to you, Lord. Like all I have is a song, yeah. and you know, it's it just was like very um, fitting. It's like just the, this this rock, yeah. and it's like all it is is this, this rock, this street, yeah. and yet there's so much beauty in it. Somehow, you know. Well, that's the the birth of Christ. That's what we're trying to right. capture with the Christmas right. special, with the messengers and the shepherd. Is how simple it was, how unassuming it was, how you never would have seen what came if you would have just looked at the beginnings of it. Yeah. And if you would have looked at when you were writing gratitude and how it was just a simple thing. If you would have looked at when I was doing a short film on a on a farm in Illinois, uh, and when Jesus came to Earth. 
uh, in a barn. It, you, 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 didn't, you didn't see what came next yeah. uh, if you would have just looked at that, and that's how God works, which is really cool. So uh, real quick, um, I'm going to share what the, my favorite song of yours and favorite lyric, and then you can, they always like to hear what your favorite moment is from The Chosen. Yeah. Um, but uh, the lyric in, um, in Graves Into Gardens um, when it says, uh, he turns seas into highways. Heck yeah. I'm, I almost got, I'm going to cry right now because for us, as you know, Red Sea moment mm. um, is, is a huge part of our show. It's a huge part of our experience where God takes us to the edge of the Red Sea. And he, and just like in the story, when, uh, in the actual story in the Old Testament, he told the Israelites to camp out. He actually used the word encamp. I want you to be there. I want you to stay there. Think about that. They're going, why would you put us in a spot when we're trying to escape the Egyptians where there's no escape? You're just putting us in this, like you're trapping us. And he's like, hold, stay mm. there. He's telling them, I got something for you. And yeah. he could have just sent them around. He could have sent them somewhere else. He put them in the place where they had nowhere else to go, where the only way out was a miracle. It's the story of the feeding of the 5,000, but it's the story of the Red Sea moment. And then what did he do? He turned seas into highways. He, turned, he opened the waters. They walked through like it was a road. And uh, every time, I'm not exaggerating, without mm. exception, every time Amanda and I sing that song in church, we, again, same thing, we can't look at each other because it's like, oh. he turned seas, and we just stopped singing because we're weeping. But wow. uh, that's, my, that's my favorite uh, moment, along with, um, that's amazing. with the gratitude, just I've got nothing else. I yeah. got nothing else fit for a king. Yeah. Um, so yeah. now it's time to talk about my show. Talk about, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. now talk about me. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I mean, nothing can top the, the, the scene of the first you know, the first season, first mm -hmm. episode when Jesus walks onto the scene, I just, I'll, that for me was probably the most um, tangible, like, presence of God mm -hmm. fill, filled our room kind of moment. Okay, this might be a little off the wall. I will say one of my favorite episodes, and I don't know if it's a particular moment, mm -hmm. but it's when Jesus is spending time with all the kids, like yeah. in the woods. Yeah, that's episode three of season one, yeah. That, for me, um, is one of those moments, like I was saying earlier, like, made the Bible black and white into color. And yeah. it's like, it's, it's like you get to know Jesus' personality, yeah. right? Or you're yeah. portraying like, this is what I think his personality would have been like in this moment. I've never really thought about just the dynamic between Jesus and hanging out with children. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I just, oh, getting emotional right now. <laughs> but like to see him hanging out with kids and to see them responding to him. Oh, and like now they, I have little boys. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. Like, yeah. um, and, and they pray the Shema and they're praying about the God of the universe and whatnot and he's hearing it. And then yeah. it makes you think like, like you said, when your kids pray or when you're leading them in prayer, that he's listening and, and being, yeah. being moved by it because it's about yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. absolutely.